Hello students, in this video we'll define the multiplication of two Dedekind cuts. Let's let alpha and beta be Dedekind cuts with the property that alpha and beta are both greater than the zero cuts, so they're not negative cuts. And what we're going to do is we're going to define, define alpha dot beta to be the set of P in Q such that P is less than or equal to A times B, where A is in alpha, B is in beta, and A and B are greater than zero. And we claim that this is going to be the definition of multiplication on non-negative real numbers. If the real numbers are negative, if they're both negative, or if one's negative, one's positive, we'll just use the sign convention to define multiplication for those real numbers. So we first want to show our claim is that alpha dot beta is actually that it can cut. So our claim is that with this operation, alpha dot beta is a that it can cut. So a couple things to prove there. So the first claim is that since alpha is not empty, that implies that there exists an A in alpha with A greater than zero. And likewise for beta, beta not empty, implies that there exists a B in beta with B greater than zero. And what I can do now is I can form this A times B, right? So then A times B, A times B, since A is an alpha, it's a rational number, B is a rational number, the both that were greater than zero is actually an element. This is a element of Q. And A, B is less than or equal to A, B, and that implies that A times B is in alpha dot beta, and so therefore this is not empty. So that's not empty. Likewise, since alpha is not equal to Q, and beta is not equal to Q, this implies there exists an alpha tilde that's not in alpha. In particular, it's greater than everything in alpha. And this implies that there exists a beta tilde that's not in beta. So in particular, this says that A tilde is bigger than A for all A in alpha. And B tilde is bigger than B for all B in beta. And what I can do then is I can say, therefore, that this tells me that a tilde B tilde is larger than A times B for all A in alpha and B in beta. And that implies that A tilde B tilde cannot be in this cut. So A tilde B tilde is not in A B. And that says that A dot B is not all of Q. So A dot B beta is not all of Q. And that's the first property of Dedekind cuts. This next property, so that's property one of Dedekind cuts. Let's do property two of Dedekind cuts, okay? So namely, let's suppose that P is in alpha dot beta. And so this implies that P is less than or equal to A dot B for some A in alpha, B in beta, A and B greater than zero. And if Q is less than P, so Q less than P implies that Q is less than P is less than or equal to A times B. And so that's the same condition is true, so this implies automatically that Q has to be in the cut. So Q is therefore in what? Is in the alpha beta set, right? I'm saying a cut because it is a cut, so. And finally, the last thing to verify, so that's property number two. And finally, property number three says that let's suppose that P is in A times B, alpha times beta. Then P again is less than or equal to A times B for some a in alpha, B in beta, A and B greater than zero. Now we know that there automatically is a element in A and B that are larger than A and B, right? So pick A tilde in alpha and B tilde in beta with A tilde bigger than A and B tilde bigger than B and then form A tilde, B tilde. So we're going to form A tilde, B tilde. Now this is, again, a rational number, right? 
and it's bigger than what? This is bigger than the p in question, because it's bigger than a times b, right? Bigger than a times b, and that's bigger than or equal to p, so it's bigger than or equal to p, so it's a bigger number. And a tilde b tilde is less than or equal to a tilde b tilde, and so this implies that a tilde b tilde is in alpha dot beta, and therefore we have found a larger element than p in the set alpha beta. So hence this implies, so hence alpha dot beta is a Dedekind cut. So we've shown that this operation is, operation multiplication is a closed operation. That's the first field axiom. In the next video, we'll show the field axioms of commutativity, associativity, and the existence of an identity. Thank you very much.